Before we start today's video, I wanted to first thank all of my viewers, and especially my subscribers, for helping me reach 100 subscribers. You guys as a community have given me excellent feedback and so many kind words. I hope you guys will come along for the ride as we continue to explore the prehistoric world, both in the Dino Basics as well as a new series moving forward. Thank you all so much for your support. Now let's get into today's topic. Welcome my beautiful people to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll look at a personal favorite of mine, the spiked ceratopsian, Styracosaurus. Styracosaurus was first discovered in 1913 by C. M. Sternberg, and later named by paleontologist Lawrence Lambie. This original fossil was located in modern-day Canada, in the province of Alberta, specifically an area named the Dinosaur Provincial Park, an area renowned as one of the richest dinosaur fossil sites in the world, with an estimated 58 species having been discovered there. This original specimen was named Styracosaurus albertensis, with Albertensis being referenced to the province in which Styracosaurus was originally discovered. Over the next hundred years, various Styracosaurus species would be identified, like the Styracosaurus parksi and Styracosaurus mckelly. But as additional specimens were recovered and studies were written, these species would be cut down to two, the type specimen of Albertensis, as well as Styracosaurus ovatus a species discovered in the modern-day United States, specifically the state of Montana. This species was differentiated mostly by the spikes on its frill, as Ovatus only had two spikes on either side of the frill compared to Albertensis's three, and other differences like the length and positioning of the spikes. This species was briefly identified as a separate genus known as Rubiosaurus in 2010, but in 2020, the general consensus among paleontologists shifted towards Rubiosaurus, once again being Styracosaurus ovatus instead. The name Styracosaurus translates to spiked lizard, in reference to the variety of spikes across its skull. These spikes are quite common among others in its suborder, the Ceratopsians. We've discussed Ceratopsians in a previous video regarding Protoceratops. Ceratopsians are a suborder of Ornithischians, most well known for their distinct skulls, featuring a large frill and beak. Unlike Protoceratops, Stracosaurus belonged to a family of Ceratopsians called the Ceratopsidae, including the famous Triceratops. The Ceratopsidae were quadrupedal herbivores that dominated the North American continent during the Cretaceous period, between 145 and 66 million years ago. Styracosaurus itself could reach between 16 to 18 feet in length and approximately 6 feet tall. They could weigh about 2 tons, as much as a modern day white rhino. Their body structure also resembled a rhinoceros, with powerful shoulders to support its head and strong high limbs to carry its heavy body. It had a comparatively short tail to counterbalance its body and head, but the most obvious characteristic to discuss would be its ornate skull. Depending on the species, Stracosaurus had between 4 and 6 spikes along the edge of its frill, each about 22 inches in length. Stracosaurus also had a horn just above its nostrils, which was similar in length to its frill spikes. The skull also had two small horns on either cheek. The frill often had other ornamentations, like bumps or notches, but these varied between individuals. Its beak was very powerful, with shearing cheek teeth that were ideal for slicing up ferns and cycads. The spikes and frills have been a point of contention among paleontologists. While obviously threatening in appearance, whether they were applicable in combat has been debated. Early fossils seem to feature skulls with cuts and holes that match the horns of other Styracosauruses, indicating that they could be used in combat against rivals, but a 2006 study found that this was unlikely 
due to lack of infections or healing marks on the bones. As of now, it seems more likely the horns were primarily for intimidation and as a last defense against predators or rivals. The frill, similarly, has been debated, as the fence seems somewhat unlikely. Some suggest it could be used to distribute and regulate body heat, similar to the ears of modern-day elephants. This, however, is not conclusive either, as this does not explain the variations among other Ceratopsidae members regarding their frills. A more likely reasoning would be for sexual purposes. No, not like that. Gross. Similar to Protoceratops, the frill could be flushed with color to attract potential mates. Stracosaurus lived throughout North America, specifically most of Canada and the northern parts of the United States. It lived during the later half of the Cretaceous period, between 75 and 70 million years ago. It likely would have lived alongside other Ceratopsidae members, like the Centrosaurus and the Chasmosaurus, as well as other herbivores like the armored Euoplocephalus and previous Dinobasics entry, Corythosaurus. Stracosaurus also would have needed to contend with dangerous carnivores, including relatives to the Tyrannosaurus, like Gorgosaurus and Daspletosaurus. Based on fossils being found in close proximity to one another, Stracosaurus most likely lived in small to medium-sized herds for protection. Its fairly large size and intimidating features also would have been a strong deterrent for carnivores. Today, Stracosaurus rivals Triceratops as one of the most distinct and famous ceratopsids, being featured in a number of projects across pop culture. Movies like 1933's Son of Kong, 1969's Valley of Guanji, 2000's Dinosaur, and 2015's The Good Dinosaur have all featured Stracosaurus. Kid shows like 2005's Dinosaur King and 2009's Dinosaur Train have also featured the beast. And video games, including 2003's Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, Jurassic World Evolution 1 and 2, 2020's Path of Titans, as well as 2022's Prehistoric Kingdom, have all included Stracosaurus in some way. And that's just to name a few. Stracosaurus embodies many of the ideas as to what makes dinosaurs so fascinating to study. Its power and intimidation is evident, yet much of its life and behavior are shrouded in mystery. We may never know everything about this dinosaur. With what we do know, it probably would have been sparked to steer clear of this beast. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Stragosaurus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. Stragosaurus is by far my favorite dinosaur, so getting to feature it in such a special episode was a lot of fun. We have one more video this week on Friday, when we explore the Parasaurolophus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.